Before we do some cleaning together, I wanted to bring to your attention that if you've been coming back to my channel to watch, if you are not a subscriber, there's going to be times that YouTube will not show my channel popping up in front of you because with some of the new things that I'm sharing or some of the algorithm, they're not going to recognize you as somebody who wants to watch my channel. So if you don't want to miss anything, hit that subscribe button. If you want to get notified when I make a new video, hit the bell and you will just get a notification and you can watch it at your leisure. But for now, let's go clean. When cleaning your self-cleaning oven, you'll want to follow manufacturer's instructions. Mine did say that I could leave these racks in, but if you have shiny metal, take them out. I'm just cleaning up some of the loose debris to help lessen the smoke and the smell in the kitchen. Even though this is a self-cleaning oven, the instructions do say go in with a little warm soapy water. I did that. It took no time at all. If possible, open a window just a little bit and then also turn on your oven vent. On my GE Monogram gas range, I just have to turn it to clean on both of the buttons. You want to do between 3 and 5 hours. I did 3 hours 15 minutes. Once it was done, I opened the door and all I had to do was wipe up the dried debris. Before I get started, I want to let you know that the sound you hear in the background is water boiling on the stovetop. What I'm going to show you today is one of the processes I use for cleaning silver. Now before I go on, I would really like to beg you not to use this process on your really good, really fine beautiful antique silver. Um, I would use a high quality polish for that or if it's very valuable I would take it to an expert possibly to have them clean it or at least get their opinion on how you should do it. So this process that I use I showed it once in um, this is my fall issue which is sold out. I don't have any more of these unfortunately but speaking of this issue I'm thinking of pulling together a best of because I I guess we're getting ready with the water. Let me just shut that off. All right, so at least I know that's ready. Um, I'm thinking of possibly doing a best of. Um, I This one went so fast and there are some fun articles, so I'm thinking of doing that. Anyway, all right, so some things that you're going to need for this is either if you have, you know, you could use your sink, but I either use an aluminum foil container and I also put aluminum foil in it because this is actually causing a chemical reaction to pull off some of the tarnish. Um, for today, I'm going to show you using a bowl here because I want to submerge these items. You're going to need some baking soda, salt. I have an old pair of tongs here that I use when I do candle making and things like this. So I have my tongs here. Oops, some gloves. This is also more so for the hot item. And then I have some, some pieces here that I'm going to be cleaning up. So I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on some things that I've been finding out. So when I go out thrifting, I can see if it's electroplate, if it's sterling, valuable or not. I'm really having fun researching that. And when I was doing my research, I kept seeing on some sites 
that this is not the best way to go about using it. But I also realized that some of those sites are selling their own products. So I still have my own research to do. But this large julep cup, I found this at a resale shop. It was $4.99. I just took the tag off and I did find it online on Wayfair. Um, it's the exact same brand. This is Godinger and they're selling it in the low 30s. And so I figured I'm going to show you how to use this because this item's not valuable to me. I actually have this in my bathroom and when it was all pretty and silver, I had my razor in there and just some other longer products that I can just grab such as um, a facial brush and things like that. So I'm going to show you how I clean this. This item is from Gorham. This is a higher end silver company here in New England. This is electroplate. It does say EP on the bottom. So this is an electroplated item. I have read that it's not best to do electroplated in this process, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna show you. I paid maybe $3 for this and I did look online and resale they're getting about 30. So um, if I ruin it, my bad but I want to show you how that works as well. Then I'm not sure if I'll go on to these. Um, I might because I have two containers, but these are items that I picked up once again at another thrift store. They were used in a photo shoot that I did um, and it was for a tea party and I put herbs in them. They were really beautiful and shiny, but now you can once again see they're tarnished. And I have two that are fairly identical. So I figured I would do one and then share the before and after. And then I'll see if I can find some of the, the photos of the photo shoot for that tea party that I did for a hotel. And then I will possibly use those myself for some planting and herbs. So let me get started. Once again, this is a chemical reaction and it's just kind of a cheater's way of speeding up the process versus using your paste. And I am reading that a lot of the dipping liquids might be a little too harsh. So I'm going to stay away from those, um, the store-bought ones. And I've got my magazine way that I've always used. I looked on Martha Stewart and they say to use two tablespoons of baking soda per cup of water. They do not use salt. I do. Um, and then another company here doesn't even specify how much water to that. So let's try the about one cup of water to two tablespoons baking soda. And then I'm going to add a little salt. Um, in the past, I've even used a little lemon juice and vinegar. If it's something that's really black and tarnished that once again, if I ruined it, I'm okay with that. Um, I would never use that on some of my beautiful items like from, uh, that I have from Reed and Barton and my tollware. So let me get started here. I'm going to first put in my water and I'm gonna need a pot holder. Let's see here. Let me just use this towel here. I'm gonna start with this bowl. I'm going to do the gorm piece first. So I'm going to fill this bowl up with the boiling water. And I'm going to say this is going to be about two cups. And it's okay if the water goes outside of the tin foil. The tin foil is mainly to create that, that chemical reaction. All right, so let me put this back on the stove. Boy, eyeballing, I'm going to save about three cups here. But I'm just going to... Foods are not in there. Get them out of the dishwasher. They are clean, they're just still wet. Okay, so I'm gonna add, let's see, I've got about four cups here, but I'm going to just go in here and put in one, whoa, whoa, whoa. two, three, give it a quick stir. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt here, about a tablespoon. And you can see that it's bubbling. I hope you can see that. I'm just gonna dunk that in there. Now you don't wanna leave this there for too long. And I'm putting these on just because of the heat. I don't wanna leave it too long. But I am gonna get my tongs just so I can turn it around in here a bit. Oh, all right, so. How fast was that? And actually, I don't want my tongs to scrape this container. So, 
I'm not, I'm, this is silly to do this this way, but I wasn't thinking, I just don't want to use this, this uh, tongue that can scratch it. Now, I will warn you, look at how fast that works. This does make a sulfur smell or an eggy smell. I, my husband's upstairs working in his office and I already warned him. Look how fast that came off. Now there's still a little bit of tarnishing. I just don't wanna to go too long, too fast on this to take off the, the other pretty patina. So I'm just gonna give this a quick rinse in my sink. Right. And I don't have my buffing polish just close by. I should, but this is a very soft cloth. And once again, there's still a little tarnish on here, but for this piece, I don't want to go into the, um, if they had any lacquer finish. I'm not even sure. I have to research with the gourm. Look how fast that came off. Amazing, right? So I'm just going to dip this to show you. I don't know if you can see that. Let's give that a quick dip. I'm just going to count. And you, this, they say two to 10 minutes. I've never left mine that long. It's already cleaning. And I had out this container to actually do this one in, but now that I'm having fun, this is kind of like a science experiment. Love it. Can you see the difference? So I'm just gonna roll that in there. Now, one thing I do not know, I'm guessing some of you will ask, is how many pieces you can use this in. I'm not sure. So maybe we will find out. But yes, there is quite an eggy smell here. I'm just gonna give this a quick rinse. I'll probably do this one again in that other container. This is the impulse side of Linda. I'm very impulsive. I just had to see what this did. But this has a, lot, a little bit more to go. This was very dark, as you remember but you can already see the difference. I'm gonna do that in there, get some more boiling water going. But let's try one of these two items that are very similar. One's a little bit bigger, I just, I didn't notice that before. Um, I'm just gonna plop that in here, get some water in it to hold it down. Unfortunately, it's the water, the bowl's not deep enough. This is when using your sink or a very large container, if you have a very large bowl, would work. Actually, still have a plant in there. Peaceful plant. Now look how fast. Once again, now can you see the difference? Amazing. Oh gosh. Let me just. I'm gonna come over to the camera just to show you something here. Can you see that difference? Right here, where the line is. That is how fast that tarnish came off. When you use this process. Some of the, the deeper crevices where you might want a little tarnish just to give it, it shows the pattern, it would take that off. But on this one, I'm okay with it. I'm gonna take it off. Because I know when I purchased these, they were completely silver and it was beautiful. It's amazing. Is it really eggy smelling in here to you or just a little bit? No. So here's one thing. I'm going to guess that you can only get about two, maybe three uses. Because when I just tried to re-pour some baking soda in just willy-nilly without even measuring, the fizzing action didn't happen. And that's because well, I shouldn't say that's because. I'm guessing that's because the tin foil has already grabbed a lot of that tarnish on that. So the chemical reaction didn't happen as much. So I'm gonna pour this out and let's see what the tin foil looks like. It, it has to turn color. It, I don't know if that shows. I'm gonna try to swap them out so you can see it. There is definitely a difference. This is duller, a little darker gray versus the shine. I just want to state this again that if you decide to use this process, that's up to you. I actually am going to keep doing some of my thrift store finds because you know what? I'm okay 
with using this process on them. I bought them for dollars, like in below $5. And the purpose of them is to adorn my shelves and to put nuts in for holidays. They're not family heirlooms that I'm going to be passing down to my children or my grandchildren. Now that said, I would hate to find that I had a bowl that was historic, uh, had some historic value to it. I don't think that's going to happen for the majority of my thrift store finds. So I'm going to keep cleaning some of my items that were picked up here and there, but I'm gonna keep playing and I will see you on the next video. I actually have more water boiling. Bye now.